pleasure of experiencing a week-long uh, workshop with Christoph Zellweger. Um, his discussions have been truly thought-provoking and inspiring, so we wanted to take a moment as the students to thank you for that. And um, we also wanted to thank Iris for arranging this workshop and to thank the Critical Studies for hosting this lecture. Uh, Christoph Zellweger trained and worked as a traditional goldsmith and model maker. He continued to work in Switzerland's jewelry business for several years before completing a master's program at the Royal College of Art in London. He is internationally known for pushing boundaries on the definition of body adornment by creating objects and one-off jewelry pieces, all of which exist in a space between critical design and object art. Over the course of this week so far, Christoph has continually challenged our thinking on both a macro and micro level. Christoph conducted a workshop and lecture here at Cranbrook Academy of Art back in 2006, and we are lucky and want to thank him back. Christoph. Was it 2006 or seven? Six. Right, right, okay then. <laughs> All right. Um, I think the last talk, you, you went to the library and looked at my past talk. Yeah? I think at that time I was talking free. This time I want to uh, read my text because I prepared myself a little better for it. And um, I think sometimes it's more precise actually when, when you have written it down. So um, the talk will be called Incredibles. And And this is the first piece, which is called 20, 26 Stitches. And it was the title of a piece of work in an exhibition at Annex, an art space run by Gallery Vice Versa in the city of Lausanne, Switzerland. This wall piece, constructed in leather in the shape of an oval portrait or mirror frame, showed a nipple areola construction, the way surgeon crafts them by cutting, forming, and stitching the human body in such a way that the previously amputated body part will again appear as natural as possible. Yes, I am a jeweler, a craftsman, and yes, I worked in the jewelry industry, as you rightly said, uh, for production for many years after my apprenticeship, and I also like to cross boundaries. I explore my field, which is still jewelry, but I also like to extend it. This particular piece reflects on the way I often approach the development of my work. I'm interested in reality, in the real world, but I also like theory and enjoy making sense of the things and phenomena I see and experience, and I like the poetic dimension ob objects can offer the viewer. However, there's always a point when I need to go further and where running through life with open eyes where reading and studying and studying the media is just not enough. As an artist, would, uh, what do I know, for example, about the social phenomena of plastic surgery, which I think plastic surgery has become? I want to go further, get closer, and see what is not discussed and maybe never talked about. I need other information information I can feel and tr fully trust, information that allows me to become aware of the bigger picture. Maybe I'm looking for a kind of human or political dimension. After so many years working in the field of jewelry, body adornment, and jewelry as an expression of individuality, etc., and being concerned with what people do also to customize and alter their bodies, I finally decided to check what happens in the operation theater. I now watch surgeons operate. I see, listen into their conversation about their crafts, they call it crafts, or some even call it art, and watch their gestures. I feel, learn the way I understand best through following and sensing what is going on in the operation theater in a holistic way, with all the senses. In this case, for example, I also learn about the surgeon's intuitive handling of the material skin and flesh, an experience I haven't had myself and most probably won't have in the future. In this talk, I will report on my ongoing practice-led inquiry into the constructed world of objects, bodies, and identities. So this work, this particular work, um, is 
between two and three years. Uh, and I will not talk about all the work I did before 2010. Now I will, I think, I will also try to critically reflect on what, what, feel, what I feel happens to the human body. The body also as a social and cultural mirror. I would talk about the uh, com commonality of body modification through invasive medical procedures, and I will point at the dilemma we find ourselves entangled in with the new medical and cosmetic technologies available to challenge the human body. My talk will pose questions around how these developments affect people's perception of identity and in which way the experience of the sensible world is altered or possibly even ex extended. I won't show images much more explicit than this one. This one shows actually a patient before the operation and the hand of the surgeon uh, resting in front of the body. My talk can't and does not attempt to provide answers. Instead, describe tangible body-related objects uh, responding to factual, to fictional, and ethical dimension of the subject. I will present images of the works of four recent exhibitions since 2003, uh, 2010, uh, three of them took place in England and Switzerland, one this year, uh, 2012, in Holland. In all exhibitions, I ex employed artistic strategies with an affinity to possibly critical design in order to create discursive objects. The opportunity to observe some surgery has offered me unique insights into the physical aspects of aesthetic and reconstructive surgery. I was lucky to find an experienced, and I... I was lucky that I found a female plastic surgeon. Uh, she's about my own age, from a French part of Switzerland, who allowed me to watch her operate in a private clinic. Interested in art and philosophy herself, there has been common ground in talking to her and ultimately also her colleagues' assistants and clients open further doors so that ideas continue to evolve through watching and listening. I officially enter the operation theater as an artist and photographer following the invitation by the surgeon, who takes full responsibility for the safety of her entire team and her patients, and probably also me. I'm uh, introduced to the risk and safety standards before entering the theater. Ethical concerns regarding my presence, the genuine nature of my inquiry have not come up, but giving talks also in England, uh, this had been a main concern with, uh, with my audience in England, said, how can you get in? And is this ethically correct? So I hope I don't get the same questions here. To sum things up right away, reaching so close, I, this is the only foil which I don't have on this computer, so I have to come back to this one. Uh, reaching so close to the body has made me become further aware of the body's fragility and vulnerability but more so its tremendous malleability, its plasticity, and that it is capable to recover from these heavy physical impacts. If there wouldn't be anesthetics and painkillers, modern surgery, plastic surgery wouldn't exist. The other point I like to right away make is that the body seems to be first of all material in the surgeon's hands. When under narcosis, the personal, the personal body the person and character has, as my surgeon, uh, this woman said, moved out of my sight, that's what she said, while the physical body has to deal with, uh, she has to deal with the physical body uh, with safe, uh, safely, effectively, and professional, professionally. There's little doubt, uh, there's little time to, to doubt, there's plenty of time for errors. And as in any other job where crafts processes uh, tools and technology are involved, one has to be prepared for the unexpected to happen. Besides working within the experienced team, hand-eye coordination still plays a major role in what I could observe. The surgeon's manual skills and practical experience, also that of having dealt with unforeseen problems, determines the quality of the result, the functioning of the affected body part and its final aesthetic appearance. Each body is unique and un 
predictability in surgery is common knowledge. To quote out of Donald Schoen's uh, Reflective Practitioner, maybe some know this book, aspects of, and I quote, complexity and uncertainty, instability and uniqueness, and value conflict, quote, and arise at the meeting point between traditional patterns and practice and the reality of the practice. From my point of view, there's hardly a better place than the body and surgery to find this so clearly manifested. From a goldsmith's point of view, the question about the pertinence of placing objects onto the body in order to enhance people's identity and to reflect their social and cultural standing, their lifestyle and individuality seems to have shifted towards investing into the body by changing and improving body features through plastic aesthetic surgery. What was achieved through the creation of objects worn on the body in the past may as well be achieved by improving the body and specific body parts. This neck piece is constructed from two clavicular, clavicular bones, or to be more precise, at least that is what it, what it appears to be, as the presumably bone surface has been covered with pink flock. It is up to the onlooker or wearer of this piece of jewelry to find reference with the, bone, with the bones vaguely visible just below the wearer's own skin. It's a piece I made in 2005, Relic Rosé. What started out with a medical necessity, the reconstruction of body parts after World War I, World War I, here's a soldier, Walter Yeo, after the reconstruction of his face in form of a mask, which I find is very interesting. So this person was not suitable to enter the public domain uh, before, and, but by putting a mask on his face, uh, they thought this could actually make him aesthetically uh, acceptable again. So this has now moved into a flourishing industry, concerned with normative aspects of aestheticizing the body on an intercultural scale. Medical advancements have not just improved and saved lives, fine-tuning, shaping, and customize the body uh, 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 has become society's obsession. Cosmetic surgery is omnipresent. Here is a picture of a bus in London uh, and advertising. Um, uh, cosmetic surgery is in omnipresent and prices for the use of state-of-the-art medical technologies are dropping. It seems as if what is medically possibly possible, aesthetically desirable, and ethically just acceptable will be done. Ultimately, I believe that customizing and designing the body will also and maybe has already affected the thinking about the human body, and it also challenges the thinking about what body adornment may mean in the 21st century altogether. Again, a page missing. Under the heading of uh, heading jewelry as prosthesis, my artistic inquiry has looked at jewelry itself as a cultural prosthesis, aiming to extend the definition of body adornment today. Most artifacts I produced in the past 15 years can be seen as made for the body while also offering uh, or often referring to the body, concerning, commenting, reflecting, proposing, and expressing artistically through tested objects, predominantly jewelry-related works. In the past three years, I found myself thinking more on artifacts about the body and therefore focused on the phenomena of body customization from the perspective outside my field. When the wearing of the artifact hasn't, uh, has, wasn't a concern anymore, my thinking related to space and re referred to other genres, the context of installation and object art. The human 
body is unspecialized. It is not particularly well adapted to any ecological niche and for this reason is rather depending on prostheses. Thereby, this lacking being, I think that's a term the philosopher Arnold Galen uh, coined in the 40s, unavoidably transforms itself into a prosthesis animal. It invented wheels and metal wings in order to increase its mobility. Today, it enlarges its breast and genitals to increase its attractiveness and pleasure, or it modifies its facial features and body contours for example, uh, com uh, to compete, for example, with members of the same species for jobs in an increasingly competitive entertainment industry. More and more, the human body itself becomes the subject of design, a luxury item, and therefore a commodity. The installation I developed for one of the main spaces in the museum, Espace Allo, consisted of three pieces, all referring to, in the broadest sense, to reconstructive and aesthetic surgery, a coat rack, a stretcher, and a chair. These larger pieces in the center of the room, referring to public as well as domestic furniture, offered various readings, readings including a comment on the obsessive and fashionable gaze of the public on the medical body. Here you see the exhibition view and a detail. The go goggles, which are hanging of the shiny coat rack are made in a special Madame Tussaud wax. The individual breast pieces, right eye, left eye, vary in size and shape. I'd like to mention here that this group exhibition uh, uh, was, uh, there were uh, people like Pippi Lotterist and Fabrice Guigi in, and it was, uh, uh, was uh, initiated by an art historian and a plastic surgery also to, to, uh, to find uh, to, for the benefit of a Swiss uh, Breast Cancer Foundation. All my works from the Incredible series, that's the title of this work, uh, make use of exaggeration as critical strategy in order to explore the spectacular side of medical body modification and its psychological implications. It builds on the conceptual ground of foreign bodies, a former work in biocompatible medical grade steel and this work could have and theoretically be implanted and the other part body of work which called orsarium rosé here you see a relic rosé uh, a brooch piece in the upper right corner flocked work in a pink pinkish color which set out to seek people's attention through its seductive surf soft and furry surface remodeling body parts altering proportions testing anatomic corrections, playing with physical plausibilities, and to a certain degree, ridiculing, exaggerating what may be possible from a pure medical scientific perspective were ways to explore the versatile subject through actually making. And as said, the installation consisted of three elements, the coat rack, the stretcher, which was also chrome and shiny and covered with a rather elegant leather upholstery, and the chair, a single, which was also covered in leather with a nipple areola reconstruction on the backrest. I make a jump now from Lausanne via France to London. The idea of, of the London exhibition took shape at Gallery Marston Wu, uh, took shape in summer 2008, where the, art, uh, where the glass artist uh, uh, and friend from college times, Emma Woffenden, and our families spent some days together in France intensively talking about our projects, our occasional doubts, and, well, they were not occasionally only, they were often real doubts, and the things we felt need addressing. In France, we decided to work towards a joint exhibition, which became and that's the title of it, Bigger Than the Real Thing. As a title that also reflected our feeling of often being overwhelmed by what was not fully understand and the struggle to express. Our aim to create a discourse around bodily expression and contemporary or perhaps ancient neurosis. 
Emma and I developed this project over two years period through intense, intense discussion and shared writing about our resources and working methods. <coughs> Several times we met during 2009 also, we met via Skype and visited our studios to turn to fine-tune individual pieces and our concepts. On the picture left, a piece by, in progress by Emma and one of mine in my studio. It was not surprising that the show was not an easy one for our audience uh, to assess as we were up to push our own expectations and to be explicit. Here a view of three of Emma's figures. Two were fabricated from black glass bottles. While all work by Emma was placed on the floor standing, all my work was either wall mounted or on table height. For this work, I choose a matte and soft rubber coating, which in black optically resists easy identification of contours and structural details. <coughs> Visitors view the pieces first from far, but it becomes necessary to get as close as, um, get really close, to be able to sense that the surface is not painted and that only by touching the piece one would know for definitely what it is about. Here a detail of a joint. Of course, the surface also resists to be photographed, and other coat hangers from the Incredibles area. And a detail. When you know that limb lengthening for cosmetic reasons has become a common operation, especially in Asian communities, then this wall piece, which also refer refers to the domestic environment and its functioning as a coat hanger, becomes easy, easy to read. My practice reflects on these current phenomena. I like to call them new social rituals. To a wider public aesthetic, for the wider public, aesthetic surgery may not be just about personal or social ambition and status, but also about being personally brave and taking one's future into one's own hand, a way of becoming oneself through one's own choice and by engaging in personalizing in shaping one's body. The trust people have in surgery st still seems too surprising. The risks people take are considerable, but expectations seem to outrule fear. I like to think that there must be a return beyond improvement and aesthetics. Rarely ethical questions arise while the freedom of choice seems to capture people's imagination. The right to choose from what is available in, in an overriding valued, in overriding valued in all liberal democratic consumer societies. This wall mounted piece allows for making choices choices. It allows for play and interaction. Individual pieces can be taken off the panel and fixed via magnets to become worn on the body. Thinking about the individuals interest in making choices has driven this particular piece. Working in close relationship with the coating company, I was able to achieve a perfect mirror coating on this wall piece. A full reflective surface causes difficulties to look at and cannot be fully understood from far and at once. So the object has to be examined from close distance. The choice of coating some of the works supports the conceptual side of my project, the bewildering power of surfaces and the enigma of what they hide. Finally, or here some images of the exhibition set up at Annex, the art space run by Gallery Vice Versa, also in the city of Lausanne, which opened at the same night of the opening of the exhibition before in the Museum Aspas Allo. So it was very good. I had two exhibitions at the same time, one in the museum and this individual uh, exhibition so people could walk from one place to the other. Both exhibitions run for two months, so that was a great way of uh, increasing my audience. 
the installation presented in Annex uh, was an opportunity to create a more complex environment in a single room with an oversized bay window, which amplifies the impression of exposure and echoed a sense of clinical vulnerability inherent in some of the works. The cold stainless steel catering trolleys and industrial kitchen furniture created a strong contrast with some of the works in wax. The choice for this particular wax, a uh, suggestion by Emma, uh, allowed me to focus on aspects in my work that dealt with form, here an almost cartoon-like wall piece, but also formlessness and the ephemeral. The ephemeral and with bodily warmth and the organic. By contrast, other works in this exhibition showed recognizable body parts with refined detailed solutions in a cool white porcelain, like these oversized arms with just two or three fingers. And these fingers capturing precise movements connected to routine postures, like scrolling on a touch pad. Entitled Plugins and Add-ons, these works referred to the often cliched but nevertheless ongoing discourse about wearable computing, the interface between body and technology, ideas about enhancing the performance of the body for whatever reasons are omnipresent and relevant to the construction of an individual's identity and the definition of self, as influential ex exhibitions like the posthuman exhibition in 1992 did in the past, or more recently uh, in 2006, it was Entry Paradise in the field of design, which have placed the discussion again in the public realm. Medical advancements have made it possible to fine tune and shape the body in such ways that we are not far from having to think about, and this is a, a term which I, which I invented and uh, in a way like to coin into corporal design as a new of category within art and design practice. A possible corporal design practice could be an emerging field and to me, to my understanding, this practice would be, and this is a thought and concern uh, that it still keeps me waking up at night, it could be the ultimate embodiment of material culture. Again, a page missing. Embodiment explains how culture is incorporated into the, into the body to become naturalized in the form of taste, demeanor, and appearance. This is a quote by Judy Atfield in her book, Wild Things, uh, The Material Culture of Everyday Life. And a further quote, embodiment refers to modulations of gestures, manners, and attitude, nonverbal expression of identity that are both informal and, perform and performed through the body. The significant increase of aesthetic plastic surgery and other forms of body customization will certainly make communication between people and the reading of whatever is expressed through the body more complex. The real questions around how these developments may affect people's perceptions of identity and in which way the experience of the sensible world is altered or possibly extended will keep us busy in years to come. All knowledge, be it implicit, implicit or experiential, is ultimately connected to our individual body's sensorial capacity and its ability to remember. Again, a page missing. With this image of the patient after body after operation, um, imagine the patient is still under narcosis. After waking up, she will find a tiny scar and the reappearance of a missing body part. Most likely, the reconstructed breast will be a little bigger or smaller than the original, 
hopefully according to the lady's satisfaction. But, but how does, this pa uh, does a patient describe the words, what, uh, describe in words what she wants this breast to be or feel like? What will the surgeon understand? What has she understood? According to my surgeon, the one uh, which allows me to enter the operation theater, that's what she said. It is all about my experience and my intuition and knowing what's possible. She's a craftswoman and I think a designer too. It is exactly the same in my job, my own job, with my work as an artist, as a jeweler. I work from my experience. I use my intuition and I have to sense what is possible and where I can push. This is, this is tricky here. Okay. The most recent work I realized this year, 2012, for an exhibition at Gallery Louise Smit in Amsterdam. This work started off from observing surgery. Initially, I got very curious about what happens to the fat that was taken off the body. I suppose, as an object maker, this was natural for me to, att uh, to, att uh, to attract my attention. The pieces always end up on a scale. The amount is noted down in the operation protocol. The material most often, uh, but sometimes the material also uh, ends up in a waste bin. However, in this case, it ended up in an ordinary bin, which I learned later was a mistake by the young assistant. I, saw, I also saw this tiny forgotten, can you see down there? Uh, this tiny forgotten piece of flesh laying around at the end of one of the first surgeries I observed. And it was almost funny. I felt between funniness and pitiness with that piece of fat. When back in my studio, I kept watching this particular image again and again, and I started further thinking about what fat and what it means, what is fat or what what this means to me, to the people who try to get rid of it, the people who go through all this pain and efforts to remove their fat. So it became very intense and I realized how this topic is omnipresent in our lives. When we shop, talk about food, low fat, zero fat, full fat, beauty, mind and body control. There is an obsession and I sense that it would be probably what I would probably be able to understand society and my own ideas towards consumption and health better if I further investigate. Looking at operation protocols, I try to understand how much fat is physically, is actually physically removed from patients. In this case, on the right breast, 242 gram, and on the left, 256 gram are removed. So it was a so I got a lot of data here. Here a total of 2.55 kilo on tight and legs was taken off through liposuction. I also talked to people about their fat-related eating habits, about cons consuming food, and I talked with doctors. I discussed and <coughs> about their perceptions of beauty and fat control and what happens after surgery and how much fat returns after liposuction uh, or invasive fat removal. It was so touching, and I surely didn't expect that my initial concern with the construction of identity and body design became an interest into fat as, as physical material, but also as a metaphor. I can. So finally, I transformed these uh, findings into work. Accessories. Accessories became the title of this exhibition and of course, the creative misunderstanding of the two words 
that make up this jewelry exhibition was intended. There's nothing on here. The, world, the word excess lays at the etymological core of the word luxury. What exceeds, what overflows, is the most exuberant side of nature, and this is often manifested in the form of fat, bodily fat. Accessories therefore introduces the notion of excess, which I felt best defines today's social habits of consumption. The work, the work I produced was made in glass. I couldn't think of any other material more suitable than glass to create empty, translucent volumes. So I learned to blow glass. This exhibition view shows a coat rack with 10 glass pendants hanging from it. In the back you see a, a back lit curtain. Behind the curtain the exhibition continued. Each artifact, here you see the one, uh, you see one piece, a front and a back view, uh, a front or back view, had been marked with the weight references coming from the operation protocols I showed you before. The figures report on the diverse fates of fat and to me became metaphors for absence, gain and loss. Here a detailed view. and a piece worn on the body. It's the first piece, actually, of uh, first photograph of the piece worn. Uh, it's, uh, the exhibition was taken down just for three weeks ago. On the opening day, I also invited a plastic surgeon and hope for discussion with uh, visitors about their views on fat and the conceptual link with contempor contemporary jewelry. This worked, and now it got me into trouble. A mother of three, who intended to do a breast reduction for years, commissioned me to make a particular piece about her new life after her operation. This for me is a new territory. But I feel that I touched on something upon something that concerns people and then somehow matters. This is uh, the invitation. Uh, so it was called, the final of the exhibition was called uh, Accessory, Let's Talk About Fat. And this is the last picture. Good. Thank you.